to Buckeye Nation. Over the past three and a half years, we've been unable to beat Michigan football. Today, Ohio State pays more than almost any other school for our players, and yet we've got little to show for it. Despite my best efforts, countless hours in the film room, and even a few attempts to bribe the referees, kidding, just maybe, I've been unable to achieve the one thing that truly matters, beating Michigan. Let's face it, Michigan has become our kryptonite. I thought I had all the answers. We studied their plays like they were the answers to the final exam. But somehow, every year, we end up like the guy who didn't study at all. Remember that time when we had their entire playbook? Yeah, couldn't even pull it off. It's like trying to make a gourmet meal with a recipe and still burning the house down. I've tried everything, motivational speeches, new playbooks, even consulting a few mystics and a couple shamans. Yeah. Shaman. Yeah. Lost my, lost my place there, but nothing seems to work. I've tried making excuses, the weather, the refs. I just can't get the job done. My hairline has receded faster than our chances in the fourth quarter against Michigan. So it's time for me to step aside and let somebody else take the reins. Maybe someone with a secret weapon, like a four-leaf clover. A rabbit's foot. Or a direct line to the football gods. I hear there's a guy selling miracle water online. Maybe I'll give him a call. Thank you, Buckeye Nation, for your unwavering support and for always believing in the team even when I couldn't get it done without Urban Meyer's players. I'll be watching from afar, probably with a tub of ice cream and a box of Just for Men's hair dye, hoping that someday someone will finally bring home a victory against Michigan. (laughs) Sounds like your divorce letter to me. (laughs) What? Okay. No, um, it was actually way more diplomatic than I was hoping it was going to be. I thought there were going to be more jabs in there. <laughs> Welcome to the He's Right, He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. By the way, you said that wrong on Monday's episode. You said, "Welcome to the He's Wrong and She's Right," and then you also forgot to say podcast, which I corrected you on. It's okay. You had never done the intro. You'll get there next time. Uh, if there's ever a next time. Today, you can do the next one. You want to do the next one? No, thank you. You want, you want, we can do a retake right now. No, thank you. They'd appreciate it. No, thank you. Why not? Okay. You've done 65 plus episodes. I am your co-host. No, you're a host. I am not. Yep. Co-host, is, co-host is somebody that doesn't have to be there. You're a exactly. host. You're a host. No. All right, so today we're talking about what? You got a list. It's your list. But you wrote it down. I don't have it. You wanted to talk about Jake Paul. Okay. You wanted to talk about Destiny. Okay. You wanted to talk about um, Lips of TikTok and several other accounts on X or Twitter. Okay. That is it. That's it. That's all you have. Yes. Okay. So I guess we'll start with the- That's all you have. Start with the uh, Jake Paul fight then. Okay. So Take his, us away. his replacement fight, or was, would it be a replacement fight? They they kept the date with Netflix okay. this past Saturday. But you didn't watch? No. Why not? Because I'm not. You in- would have only watched if it was Tyson? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So they had this fight. There was a bunch of trash talk back and forth, blah, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Um, Jake Paul ends up winning. Okay. And apparently the promotion that... Uh, so wait, hold on, time out. You said he's like super roided out. There's no like regulation on taking performance enhancing I drugs I don't know regarding this, a fight. So a lot of that stuff is out of your system pretty quickly and it depends on whether or not the fight is sanctioned or not and all the other... Like if it's a, if it's a it, ranked... When it was Tyson, I know it was a right. sanctioned fight, so it right. was not I don't know. anymore. I don't know. I don't know. 
But if, it, if it's a ranked and sanctioned fight, then they have all these tests and checks and measures like they test you basically all throughout. Right. But anyway, so the Mike Perry's promotion, so the, like, the organization that promotes him and puts him on, finds him fights and stuff like that, okay. is owned by, or at least partially owned by, uh, what's his name? Short Irish guy. Connor see, McGregor? Yeah. yeah. Am yeah. I saying that right? Yeah. I just guessed that. <laughs> you <laughs> said short Irish guy. So. He fired his ass over Twitter for losing the fight. What? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Connor McGregor. What? Could you imagine finding out you're fired over Twitter? I mean, it happens to a lot of people. There's people that find out like, because, you know, politicians slip up and they have inside information. And they go on, oh, we're so sad. And then people are like, I'm literally commuting to work. Nobody told me I was fired. Oops. <laughs> Connor McGregor fires Mike Perry. Uh, uh, fires him from his bare knuckle fighting championship after loss. Uh, I'm trying to find one that's like not a news agency because they're probably going to be like, it was. You need to find like the actual tweet. Yeah. Or what is it called now that it's X? I don't understand. People say tweet still and post, but it's a, a tweet is just a post. It's the same thing. You're, you're, it's none a, of it makes yeah, any yeah, sense. Yeah, to me. yeah it doesn't matter. Um, we're all losers. I was hoping that it was going to pop right up. Okay. So Conor McGregor yeah. fired him over yeah. Twitter, like immediately after the fight, or was it the next day? Because this happened like a week ago, right? Happened two days ago. What day? Saturday. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought it was two Saturdays ago. Okay. So yeah. was it that night, Saturday night, or was it the next day, Sunday, that he posted? I'm pretty sure it was like right after. It might have been. So I guess it depends on the time zone. But usually like a main card fight is like. Well, they late. usually happen in Las Vegas, don't they? So that's. Right. But I'm, I'm saying for us, for us. No, they're mountain time. They're mountain time. Okay. Um, usually, okay, this is like an infamous scroll website. And I hate that. I don't want to scroll right into another article about something completely unrelated. Uh, Mike, fires Mike Perry quote. Let's see if we can pull that up. Okay. Conor McGregor fires Jake. Can you describe what this guy looked like? Since Mike I didn't, Perry? Yeah. Was he... So, Jake Paul is kind of tall, right? He's like your height. Yeah. And then roided out. So, I'm picturing this other guy to be small because he's under Conor McGregor. But I'm sure that's not accurate. No. So, what did he look like? Well, the only picture that they have is him laying on the ground. So. Oh, that's kind of hard to discern exactly yeah. how big somebody is if they're being laid out. After Perry lost to Paul in Florida, McGregor tweeted, Hey, Mike. Oh, wait, Florida? Yeah. Hey, Mike, oh. you're released and can go compete in your smelly, dirty boxing championship things. <laughs> uh, the smell of it. Good luck. You're fired. Damn. Yep. Now I'm totally like picturing my boss firing me that way. <laughs> that would be such a blow. To to Yeah. Learn that you if got I fired. like woke up the next morning to that as how I got fired, I would be devastated. I don't think you would be. I think you would you you use anger to fuel you, whereas something like that, that would destroy me. So Mike Perry is five foot ten, hundred and eighty five pounds. Okay, so I, he's out of Flint, Michigan. I was picturing a small dude, and that's a small dude. He's out of Flint, Michigan. Yes, everybody who's under five ten, you are small. He's Flint, Michigan, though. All that, all that good water. Yeah, that good water got him very far. He actually looks like somebody from Flint, Michigan. <laughs> okay. Anyways, he looks like every weed dealer I've ever seen, and. Michigan and Indiana. Like that's so there's really no regulation size wise versus size. Like size like 
he's five ten, and if Jake Paul's like say it, six four, usually, something, usually it's weight class based, right? But that guy does not look very big. But you can get sanctioned fights that are out. So like, wait, hold on. How big is Conor McGregor? Does he only hire little dudes hmm. to make himself look Conor better? Conor McGregor. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Conor Anthony McGregor. Is I, don't need, I don't need to hear anything about him. Um, five eight. So I was guessing. Hmm. So, in order to work for him, you have to be under six foot, probably. So, um, I lost my train of thought there. Talking about Flint, Michigan, and how he looked like a weed dealer. That's oh, yeah. what you were on. Oh, I was tangent. just like all those all those guys that like grew up white trash in that area. Like that's basically they all had the same haircut. They got fights in middle school and high school, so might as well continue that for the rest of their life until they get laid out by Jake Paul, apparently. Pretty much. Who Oh, was we were talking about weight a classes. YouTuber and now yeah. he fights professionally, question mark. So he's, but he's, really is doing he's six it. one. Huh. And they're calling his weight class. Maybe because his girlfriend weight. is so tiny, that's why he looks bigger in pictures. Cruiser weight weight range is one seventy five to two hundred. So he was within his class. Yeah, six one's not very big. Anyway, so Usually, and actually McGregor, I believe, did this at least at least one time that I can remember. I think he fought up, but I know other people have done it in the UFC. Did he win that fight? I don't remember. It's I haven't watched UFC and stuff in so long. Um, Anderson Silva, I believe, was notorious for doing it too. Like he would he would no, go he up and down. He was like one of the best UFC fighters ever. He would. The, actually, the last time that he fought, he broke his own leg. <gasps> Kicking somebody, he broke his own leg. Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. And that all happened, that that Louisville guy that I ho- told you about, um, that I was at, the, I was working in the university department, and I watched it happen. I watched Vaguely. both. He was a Louisville basketball player. Okay. College basketball player, and I was mm-hmm. watching the tournament. Mm-hmm. And he, like, he was running – Towards the basket, I don't know if he was trying to get a rebound or layup or what he was doing. And there just had to be like enough moisture or his shoes didn't weren't tacky, dusty, whatever. And he like slipped. And in those arenas, they have the instead of obviously the goal can't hang from the ceiling because the ceiling's several hundred feet up. Mm-hmm. They actually have that whole thing down on the ground and it's heavily weighted and stuff, so right, it can't move right. and can't be knocked around like a hockey goal. Right. And he slipped and went right into it and buckled his leg and I yeah, I watched the compound fracture. I was like, I'm I'm standing in the emergency department. And, and I'm like, like, if he was here, he'd be coming in next. I think he broke his leg. <laughs> Holy shit. And the same thing happened with Silva. Like That's crazy. Yeah. He it was, was like back to back. He was throwing, I don't remember which came first, but I just remember it being memorable because mm-hmm. it was back to back. But right. yeah, I, I remember I was watching, I was in my living room. I had like seven or eight friends over and we were all watching and like all of us had like bets on Silva. Like it was a fight Silva should have and probably would have won. Gotcha. And he probably would have gone on to fight another couple of years. But yeah, he... But that retired him? All but. he. I think he tried to make a comeback shortly after that and then he lost again. And like, gotcha. That was like when he realized, okay, my I can't do this anymore. And he was older compared to most fighters already at that point. Gotcha. He was just... He was one of those guys where you just are like, nope. Mm-mm, don't want to fight him. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, I've never heard of him. So he's lanky, but like very, very fast and technically proficient. Okay. So he's just like I can't visualize a lanky fighter. I don't know how tall he was. I can look it up. While you're looking that up, Anderson I've... Silva height. You also six two. That's him. Oh, okay. Uh, I would not classify that as lanky. If you, he has like, he has a lot of muscle on him. That is much more muscle than a lanky long, classification. He has long arms and legs, is one. Right. So he's tall. Lanky gives the visualization of not very much muscle. Hmm. That, that's a decent amount of muscle. That's, I would not classify that as lanky. Okay. 
he um he was like one of the best in same weight class 185 as Jake Paul like he's that'd be a only, fight that I would love to see he's only 185 pounds and 6 foot 2 yeah so That's... normally okay you're you're just like wrestling boxing wrestling UFC they're all kind of the same way they're they're walking around weight like their normal day-to-day weight is usually 10 to 15 pounds right, above right, their right, fight right. weight and then they make cuts right. leading up to their weigh-in right. and then they eat because well, you do your weigh-in the day or two days before gotcha and then they eat and eat and eat and eat so and eat. really they're 185 at weigh-in but yeah. then they're back up to 200 for the actual fight probably five or ten pounds you you probably wouldn't be able to put it all the way or you'd be too lethargic yeah. So actually, um, talking about Conor McGregor and talking about the UFC and weigh-ins and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I didn't know this until the other day. I was watching a corridor video and they were talking about um, Roadhouse, which I do want to watch now. So Why? Conor McGregor is in it, but not because of that, but some of the stuff that they were showing and talking about about the movie, it looks it actually looks pretty good. Jake Gen- Gyllenhaal is a terrible human being. I so, have no interest in watching it. So they did the weigh-ins. Oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't on Corridor. It was on uh, Black Rifle, uh, Veterans React. Mm. Um, they did the weigh-ins for that, and like some like the walkout and stuff like that for the the fight from the movie mm-hmm. at a real UFC event. So they had the crowd that they didn't have to like hire to bring in. Smart. Which normally to be an extra, you're paid. Right, right. You motherfuckers paid to be an extra. That's funny. that's really funny. That's funny. And. I don't think I've ever seen UFC tickets that were affordable. And usually you're in Vegas. There's been a few times when it's been outside of Vegas, but no matter where it's at, it's an expensive area. All the hotels are expensive. Right. Travel is expensive. All your food, like everything around it. It's not even just the ticket. Like you spend a lot of money to go to a UFC fight. To be an extra <laughs> in a movie yeah. that you're not getting paid to be in. Do you? Th- I wonder if anybody um, tried to recognize themselves. No, in no, it? no, no. Tried to apply to be or to have like a credit on IMDb or in the movie. Well, they probably didn't even know about it until it was already out. They so, knew. They knew when they were there watching it happen because they put it on the jumbotron and stuff. Uh, gotcha. It wasn't like secretive. It gotcha. was just. It was in between actual card gotcha. fights. Okay. Yeah. I didn't I didn't realize yeah. that. Gotcha. So usually what happens, depending on the the fight length, right? Mm-hmm. Like if somebody gets knocked out really, really quickly, they're not just gonna bring the next fight up right away. Because okay. a, a a title fight and usually some of the main card fights, I, I believe they're I believe all the main card fights are five rounds. I might be wrong. They're five five minute rounds. So if you have somebody that gets knocked out in the first minute of a 25 plus minute fight. So they're just going to make everybody sit there for the rest of the 25 minutes? Yeah. The, they have like intermission and the commentators will talk and they'll interview people and they'll, they'll hype up the next fight. They'll spend that entire gap. They don't like, they won't bring it up. That way you're not paying thousands of dollars to end up only being there for 23 minutes. Yeah total for like all the rounds that happens like really really often there's been a lot of times when people are like i paid 80 they used to be like 50 or 60 dollars and then they went up to like 80 a couple years ago and now they're like 100 to 120 oh i was thinking thousand no no, pay-per-view oh okay so people pay 120 dollars because they want to watch the title fight at the end of the card, which is the last fight. Okay. And then they get in there and somebody gets knocked out in seven seconds and it has happened. Okay. And then it's just, it's over. Like you paid $120 for There's no seven refunds. seconds. Yeah. No. Okay. That's why they put the main card fights all the way at the end. Gotcha. So yeah. So I, yeah. I would be mad. If you spent $120 well, okay. sitting in well, your own me, living room. No, no, no. No, I'd be mad if I was spending ten grand. If it was my if it was Vegas. my preferred fighter and I really hated the other person. Like I hated Conor McGregor. Mm-hmm. For like because he's just annoying. Why? Because he's so little? Yeah, he's annoying. Yeah, you just don't like little people. <laughs> so especially little Irish people. Like 
if if I pay to watch somebody fight him and then he knocks out my preferred fighter in like five seconds, I'm pissed. If it's like a really... But if it's the other way around, if they knock out yeah. Conor McGregor in five seconds, you'd be like, fuck yeah, it was worth every penny. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, boys are so stupid. <laughs> boys are so stupid. It's true. Boys are so stupid. It's true. Boys are so stupid. It's true. So stupid. Hi, doggy. Where'd you come from? So you wanted to talk about Caitlin Clark. That was a yeah. segue from you talking about People, the dude getting his leg broken. People have been... Go lay down, please. Go lay down. People have been uh, posting clips mm-hmm. of her games. And okay. in, 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 I guess uh, they had their all-star game or whatever. Okay. Um, of her being like double and triple teamed by players that were like in contention for... I don't even know what double and triple team. Basketball is a five-on-five five sport. Okay. Okay. So you're saying like... She all of the two, other team like up against just her yeah is that what that means yeah okay so just say that then that, no. say what you mean because people know what i'm talking about except for me yeah. i don't so they've been posting all these videos and it happened like i said in the all-star game mm-hmm. the one clip that i saw was uh full court press which is when your defense is playing down on it's offensive side of the court okay. so you scored or the ball went out of bounds or whatever and your opponent is passing in the ball typically they'll give them that half court space okay like they just go down there and they get ready so they can catch I don't their know breath the last time i saw a basketball game i think it was 13 years old they'll go down they'll they'll jog down to the other side to catch their breath so that they're okay. ready when the ball gets down there okay. rather than playing them close all the way up the court because that just wears you out on defense as it's it's an energy conservation thing. Okay. Plus, let's say you slip and ball or a really good player makes it around you. Now your defense is behind the player with the ball. It's not a good look for a team. People are mad about it. Okay. So, so basically she's been holding her own. Yeah. It's what I heard. Yeah. And people are like, this is who got snubbed from the Olympics and, you know, all this other stuff. I... Sports being political, both like athletes talking about their preferred politics and the sport itself, like being in fighting political, like, oh, we don't want so-and-so because she doesn't get along with Mm -hmm. so-and-so. You don't, you don't make your team any better. Okay. There'd be, if they had like some like egregious off field thing, like, they were standing trial for some crime. Okay. Or they had been previously convicted and they were somehow let back in for something that you don't agree with or whatever. Okay. Stuff like that happens. Um, there's just recently there was an NFL player that died in a car wreck and then his teammate immediately the next day was arrested for a DUI. Like, wouldn't you hate? Like, you your your teammate just died and now you went out and... Fucked it all up. Yeah. But I'm saying like the rest of your team, like I'd be pissed if I was his teammate, like, dude, yeah, our buddy just died. And then you went out and did the same thing that killed him. You're fucking retarded. They're not going to want him in the locker room. They're not mm-hmm. going to want him there. Like at all. Stuff like that is understandable. Right. Um, the I co- could see a contract being cut for that. The coach, you're going to like this, actually. This is unrelated, but I was thinking about this while telling the story. Um, the coach for Tampa Bay, the NFL team, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Um, he essentially came out with, I don't know what, why the statement, like what triggered it, but he essentially said, if you miss your kid's recital or their football game or basketball game or school play, you're fired. Yeah. Go him. Yep. Family first. Yep. So he's like, there's people that. I've heard of people sleeping in the office and this and mm-hmm. that. He's like, the, the work is going to be there. You should be. It'll be there tomorrow. Yep. You it's, can leave and then pick it back it's up. football. It's basketball. Whatever. Right. I can understand if you didn't, like, have a family and you're trying to make a name for yourself. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I want to know, like, what exactly it was. Because that's, 
That's not something somebody is just going to go out and make a statement about. That might be something that they say to their coaches when they hire them. Like that'd be a, like a closed, like, Hey, do you have a family? Yes. Okay, cool. Make sure, you know, you spend time with them and stuff. But like, well, it could be after a certain amount of times of, I'm so sorry. Can I please, my wife is pregnant. Can I go be there for the birth of my first child? Can you imagine how many times he's been asked that to then have to make a statement? Please go be there for the birth of your first child. Oh, wait, he's the former coach. Oh. Um, I don't know who he coaches But either way, go him. Or maybe he still is. I don't know. I mean, Todd Bowles is now the coach, I guess. Since, come on. I thought it was Bruce Arians or something. Did I his name. Brittany Grimers get on the Olympics team? Uh, I don't know. I don't even, does she even play? No, I have no idea. I don't know if she's even playing anymore. I thought you knew who was on the Olympics team. No, I don't know who's on it. I just know who was left off because that's what people talk Caitlin about. Caitlin Clark. What do you think? I can't, I can't find him now, but whatever. What do you think has made Caitlin Clark such a sensation? People talking about her. I I really hate to pull the race card, but I think it's because she's a young white woman. And that's what's standing her out mm. from everybody else on the team. I don't know. I don't know what the percentage of people on a WNBA team or in the league itself is to even say one way or the other, but I don't know. I wouldn't. They... They hyped her up during the college season. Right. And so when she entered the WNBA, mm-hmm. she was she automatically the villain. Villain? To existing players. You're taking you're taking the spotlight away from me. You're taking away my notoriety. You're, mm-hmm. People are talking about you and not me. Like, imagine, imagine if, like, um, LeBron, Jordan, Kobe... Um, oh my God, Larry Bird. Like mm-hmm. imagine all of them, mm-hmm. right? All the best players have are playing like at the same time. So it's like almost like an evil, or not evil, even playing field. Okay. Right? You have all these like elite Hall of Famers, all this, and then all anybody talks about is some college kid. And then that college kid enters the NBA. Mm-hmm. And now, oh, he stole the ball from LeBron. Oh, he dunked over Jordan. That's all they're talking about are those. But I don't think anybody was talking about the other girls to begin with, which is they weren't talking why about, they weren't talking about the it's league. not the same. They weren't talking about the league. They're talking about the league I, because yeah. Caitlin Clark came on. Yeah, but remember what I told she was you. was being hyped up. Remember what I told you, that your advertising money, and your apparel sales and stuff like that are what pay salaries. Right. I'd be willing to bet that the teams, the owners, college, a bunch of people came together and said, we need a face of our organization. Mm -hmm. This person is somebody who is... Has a clean background, a clean face, and we can plaster her everywhere. Let's start hyping her up now because she's a good athlete. And then once she gets to the NBA, she'll sell tickets, she'll sell merch. So it's concerted effort. And yeah. yeah. But we'll see how long it lasts. I'm not saying that she's not talented. That's not what I'm saying, but I definitely feel like she was chosen. Yeah. For a reason. But so, okay. So search trends, you know, like we're piggybacking off of this. Um, search trends, both for video news, social media, everything, Mm -hmm. right? Everybody wants to jump on whatever the trend is. Okay. So until her trend dies, people are going to be making podcasts and talking about her on the news and posting about her on social media because all of it's monetized. There's incentive for everybody to do it until nobody does it anymore. The higher the volume of posts and search, the more people are going to continue to do it until 
something happens. I think somebody's going to call us a grifter just for that then. No, that's that's what all of it is. Like you can't, you cannot be successful. The The news does it. All your favorite social media accounts, they don't post anything original. Right. They might post something in, original in between, mm -hmm. but they're always talking about current events. They're always talking about sports. They're always talking about politics. They're always, there's always something that's never only about them. Okay. Ever. So th that's the only way that you can stay alive. If you want your business to grow, you need ad revenue and or sponsors. Correct. And they're only going to pay you if you have the views. Okay. So everybody's going to keep doing it because they're getting paid to do it. The numbers look good when they talk about her. For whatever reason on Rumble, every time we, we tag her, that video through the roof. Yep. Interesting. YouTube, it's been, yeah, but Rumble's a smaller platform, so there's fewer people doing it. Mm -hmm. So people are finding it more organically and fa mm -hmm. faster people that are on the platform. So not to say that that'll be like that in the future when people, more people adopt that platform. But right now, if you can be one of the first people or somebody talking about a very specific topic on that platform, it's going to perform well. On that note, let's segue from a very angelic character in the social media platform to okay. a non-angelic character, Mr. Destiny. Oh, yeah. Mr. Pedophile. Mr. You wanted to talk about Mr. Destiny. Mr. Eats come out of other women's vagina after. Would you ever do that? Fuck no. I, I knew yeah. the I knew the answer already. No, no. Are you sure? Yes, I'm not <laughs> sure. So the. But was, what if there was you a, did it without knowing? No. Okay. Anyways, no. there was a. Uh, she posted that he had been begging. Yeah, for fee picks and stuff. Yeah, and then it progressed to licking her boyfriend's cum out of her vagina. Yeah. And this is why you don't like your kids on social media because now... And this was on Twitch, right? Um, is where he... His, that's his platform of choice, correct? Well, it was. It was Twitch and X and... I think he was already banned from YouTube a while ago. Oh, God. You know you're a good person when you get banned from social media. Well, they think that they're the like that they're right and then they're the heroes. They're just trying to suppress me and they don't the it's owned by the right now and they don't want me on their platform because everything I'm saying is true. And then he also came out for asking He's for a communist pictures of girls, quote unquote, looking hot when they were younger to slide into his DMs. And he responded to one girl saying that he wanted to bend her over her little tyke. So yeah, again, children will not be on social media. It's not even the children being on social media. It's you posting stupid shit like that and then your kid going to school and because he's a video game streamer, right. these kids knew who he was right. and now you're getting bullied because your dad's a fucking weirdo. And so his, his son came out against him, right? Yeah. And how old is his son? I think it's a 14 or 13. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't realize so young. Yeah. And he got banned from the platform because of it. Wow. Cause I mean, honestly, like what his son did on the stream was, Definitely against terms of service on every platform. Gotcha. But, but I, I didn't realize he was that young. Yeah. Wow. There's a difference between bringing a toy gun onto a stream and threatening to kill your own father and saying that you don't like your father on the stream. Right. That's definitely a fucked up household. I don't I was, think I was that, totally, I don't think when you told me them. his son, I was definitely picturing like 18 plus. No. I did not think he was underage. No, he was definitely a middle schooler. Wow, that sucks. Yep. That's terrible. Um, wow. 
And the internet's like divided about it because really, yeah. Because what is there to be divided about? Like, yeah, the way he did it is wrong, but it's, you're expressing how shitty your dad is. No, no, it's not even about that. It's about the fact that he's allowed to have basically free reign of you know the internet and stuff. Like, there's there's a case that's being made about him not he shouldn't be a streamer. Okay. And there's also a case about how terrible of a parent destiny is right. raising him like that. Right. And then there's the people that are like, no, what he did was wrong. It doesn't matter about either of those things. Right. So yeah, everybody, everybody's got their, uh, yes, but yes, but. Well, dad obviously failed. We can all agree yeah. on that. Dad failed. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Communists shouldn't have kids. So you're saying that he's a communist. Like, how, what makes him a communist? He's self-proclaimed. What? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about this guy. So yeah. the first I ever heard of it was this girl outing him. I've no, I've never seen any of his content. Okay. I know of him because of Phil Abonte talking about him and a YouTuber that I watch, um, the one that you've seen the name of and I can't think of. Um, he's got the goofy, we, we had to look up what the word meant, short, fat, something. We had to look it up and it was like something Japanese anime character or something like that. Oh, okay. But he talks, he's like a reasonable, like he's not libertarian. He's a, um, uh, like traditional liberal. Like he's not, he's not a Democrat. He's okay. liberal by definition. Which is okay. closer to libertarian. Okay, but back so, to Destiny. I'm saying that's how that's how I know who he is. Is they talk about him all the time. Why? Because his he's got such shit takes, and he's always doing something stupid. Okay. And they're all kind of within that space. Like I guess Phil is a gamer. I've never. I didn't really know that, but that's that's how I know who the YouTuber guy is. Is because of Phil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Phil's another short guy too, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this has made me think, and I've wondered this before, all of these old dudes on these platforms where they know that their followers are potentially younger because I would what what would you say the percentage of gamers are of over 18 and under 18? There's way more over 18. You think so? Oh yeah, for sure. The Has over it always been that way. The though? over 18 crowd can afford the consoles and computers. Yeah, but the also perfect example, you recently gave an amazing console to 14 year old. So That's a, although that, he's not on there, he has it's the a, ability to. It's a hand-me-down computer. It doesn't matter. It has the ability to. Right. Again, he's not on there, but. But most people don't do that. Most people sell their old parts to okay. buy their new parts. Okay. My worry, though, all these old dudes mm -hmm. on Twitch or whatever other streaming platform there is, having access to these younger yeah. males and females, both, I've seen it both ways of now they have, whether it's conversations privately or, you know, that. I'll, I'll put it this way. Almost, I won't say all, but almost all of it can be blamed on the child's parent. By giving, because every, every device and basically every service has the ability to lock down the account to, you know, child restrictions. And so if you're, you're saying if a 14 year old is on Twitch, it's their parents fault because they are, if they have just free, blindly, allowing if they have their free child reign, to do anything, if they have free reign to download and install and sign up for things, then yes, the parents should have stopped it at the download. They shouldn't have been able to download or install anything and they shouldn't have been able to sign it up. Okay. The device should be controlled by the parent. But the it's accounts. also not the parent's fault 
if somebody over right. 18 is reaching out to their under 18 child. But on those platforms, they have features where if you sign up correctly as a child and lock down their account mm-hmm. so that you, me, whoever the parent is, has to give approval for everything. Oh, you want to add something. Oh, somebody okay. wants to request access to talk to you. Okay. Somebody wants to friend request you. All of that stuff has to be approved on pretty much every platform. Okay. Parents are lazy and don't want to do it. I understand that. I hear you. Yep. But again, that doesn't negate the fact that... But it, it will eliminate a vast majority of it. If if parents didn't just go to at t or Verizon or the Apple store or whatever and just grab the device and say, here you go, mm-hmm. but actually went through and set up with parental controls and didn't just let them get their own email and didn't and actually locked it down. Like we have network level stuff that blocks most of the stuff. Right. No, I, I understand that. And that's why I've looked yeah. at the camera multiple yeah. times saying the 14 year old is not on this. Right. Just to be clear, I'm saying all the other 14 year olds in the world who are on it right now, yeah. who are overly exposed to the, these disgusting men who, mm-hmm. and I'm sure there's women too, but I'm just, it's it's like, becoming more prevalent. That computer is locked down. Does not have admin privileges. Right. Again, the, I'm not saying yeah. it's an issue in our house. I'm my eyes are being open to all the other households that it is an issue in, and the parents likely have absolutely no idea. Right. Because and that is the problem. Which I know you're saying that in that is their fault, but it's almost. They don't even they don't they don't even know it possibly even exists is part of the problem. So they don't know how to block it. But in court ignorance is not an excuse. So and I I can understand and appreciate that. People like me have posted about this stuff for years and people ignored us. So like me, because I didn't even know there was such a thing as something called Twitch. That I just don't I didn't grow up a gamer. I've never played a video game before. So I don't know about this platform. So I, as just a mom Which is owned by Amazon. children, didn't know that I needed to block this. Mm-hmm. Luckily, you are there to take care of that for me. But there are so many other people out there like me who don't even know it exists, but their children do. Mm-hmm. So I understand you're saying ignorance is not an excuse, but... There's only so many minutes in a day that you can read up on everything. So most people, like, you're not going to know every service. You don't know what Mastodon is. What is it? Exactly. But there, there is a point when TikTok became commonplace in everyone's, right? Like, okay. once it becomes common and you've heard of it, That is about the threshold where I would say is the difference between looking into it and being willfully ignorant to it. Okay, that's a perfect example. Yeah. Chloe downloaded TikTok. I didn't find out until about about two weeks after. She'd already been posting videos every time she was at her dad's house when she was unattended, posting videos of mm-hmm. her in bed for all the people of the interwebs on TikTok to be able to see her because mm-hmm. it was a public profile of a young child. I found it just completely coincidental. I was doing laundry in her room and just, all right, let me do like a monthly check. Mm-hmm. Found it. Oh my God, my heart sunk immediately. And I didn't even know that at that point in time, we needed to have a conversation about no social media, including but not limited to no TikTok. So it was just something that I didn't even know I needed to be discussing. And it was a huge learning lesson for me. It was a learning lesson for her. Obviously, it's been deleted for a long time, blocked, all of those things. Um, She has never once tried to go back behind 
But the point being, there's going to be other instances like that. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying is once you've heard the name, not just from me, but from another parent or your parents or from somebody reposting something like that's the latest moment. Anybody should be looking into it and saying, okay, what actually is this? Cause if, if we went back, if we went back two years okay, and I said the word, uh, was it Timu? Right. Okay. It's not like the shopping app. Right. So, but if I said that to you mm-hmm. and you didn't listen to the context, and you ignored me, mm-hmm. you should be like, oh, it's just another app. Okay. And now it's one of the biggest spying on people mm-hmm. and shit knockoff Chinese wares. Right, right. Like that happened very, very fast. Right. They're dumping lots of ad money into it. Every time I open Google Play, every time I open it, TikTok is the right there as promoted because I've never downloaded it. I thought TikTok was getting banned. That I'm it, so confused. All, like any other law, it takes a long time to go into effect. Okay. Gets proposed, has to go through, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So it's just taking a while. Okay. I think they, they gave them, I believe until, I believe until this fall to sell is that why all the stars, quote unquote stars of TikTok who have been making their millions for the last couple of years are moving to other platforms? Like everybody, everybody does it anyways. Like you, so when somebody finds success mm-hmm. on one platform, mm-hmm. they try and replicate it on others, usually to no success. Well, that's why you started us on all the platforms at once. Yeah. And that's why we are trudging through mud rather than no we're soaring we're, successfully on one but no. unsuccessfully on all the others no 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 it's you you have to be omnipresent from the beginning okay because there could be a shift youtube could change their algorithm and now your account's bombed and you didn't even do anything wrong okay and now I don't know, Rumble or um, Amazon Podcasts. Okay. They changed theirs, and now you're through the roof. You you cannot predict that. You need to be there before it happens, not after it happens. Right. No, I understand that, and I understand and appreciate but why you have done it. People are bailing on Instagram, like, in mass right now. And, really? Why? And, and Threads? Oh, my God, that place is... Well, Threads was a fail from the beginning. And it continues to be. Every time I open it to make a post for the podcast, it's always the same like keyword. Like everybody, everybody that I see mm-hmm. is one keyword, okay. and they all piggyback off like each other's. Like one person sees a little bit of success, uh, success with a trend. Okay. Like I saw one the other day, so I tried it just like see if I was right with my theory, mm-hmm. and I was. Okay. It was like if you live in this area. Uh, like my profile or something like that. I did and we gained like 75 followers. I just said, if you live in North Carolina, I leave a heart or whatever. I, I copy and pasted what the person said and changed it to North Carolina. And we gained 75 followers. And that's all of it. It's, okay. it's all people saying, if you have a YouTube channel, drop it in the comments. If you're a podcaster, leave me a link to your podcast. That's literally all it is. Okay. Yeah, but... So going back You're to making me not miss social media at all. Going back to Mastodon for a second. Mastodon. Yeah, what is Mastodon? They're, they're Sounds pa- like a dinosaur. They're they're part of the what's called the Fediverse, Federated Universe of Social Media. So previously, do you remember how over the years platforms had like different ways to share each other's content? Like you could post something on Facebook and then be like, Do you want to share? Like you actually had to go out of your way to share it to Instagram too, and you could share it to Twitter. Or from Twitter, you could share to Facebook. Like, it used to work where, like, they were open enough where you could share inner platform. Okay. And then everybody started isolating themselves. Like, Facebook wanted only Facebook content. And then they 
basically got rid of your ability to embed YouTube videos. Because originally, back in the day, if you want a video, you had to post a YouTube link and it would embed it like it would on a website. Okay. And then they're like, no, we want video on our platform because they're trying to capture device time right. on their platform. Right. They don't want you to leave Facebook to go to YouTube. They want you to stay there to watch the same video that you were going to YouTube to watch. Right. So Threads is Instagram's foray. Instagram is under Meta, which owns both Facebook and Instagram. Right. But Threads is an Instagram app. Okay. Does that make sense? So, so you're saying everybody is leaving Instagram. No, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Just explain what the Fediverse is. So now they're trying to create these API interconnects. An okay. API is just the computer's ability to communicate. Think of it like a language, like live language translator, right? Like you could speak your father's language and I could speak Spanish, okay. but you have the earpiece like they have like the UN and NATO Okay. Or when I talk, you you understand what I'm saying. Okay, it's like that. So I can post something on uh, Mastodon, or X, or Facebook, or Twitter, or uh, Threads, or what, and it doesn't matter. And it's the same everywhere. I post it in one place. I only have to open one app, and it goes to all apps. Mm -hmm. And everybody's comments and replies also come back to my one app. So you don't have to have all these. So in one way, it's nice. But in another way, it's a weird consolidation that is probably going to fail because eventually like they're going to get all these interconnects to work and then everybody's going to be like, well, nobody's using Facebook app anymore. We need people to come back to Facebook. So they're going to start blocking stuff that comes in from Twitter. They'll be like, oh, this is unsafe because blah, blah, blah. And that brings us to the Instagram thing. Apparently, Instagram... Like, and it already was in some ways, just completely, you know, women walking around, whatever. And all of the IT security. Women walking around, it's literally whatever. Like, they're, they're literally posts about nothing. They I saw a screen recording where my buddy made an alt account because he's never interacted with any like thirst traps or whatever on his main account. So he created an alt account to test what somebody said. He made one search, opened one post, closed the app, came back to it, and that's all his feed was, and he couldn't get it to go away. Like he went, that was one thing, he, complete fake account. He went back in and he started liking like, NBA players and shoe companies and car manufacturers and all this stuff. And none of it was showing up in his feed. It was only images and videos of women walking around their pool and sitting in some rich guy's car. That's what the entire feed was. I was like, yep, it's time to get rid of Instagram because they're definitely favoring that content entirely. You put the wrong hashtag or the wrong keyword and somebody's already adapted it for whatever and your feed's just, it's gone. And you can't, you can't actually tailor it because they don't care what you actually want. They want to keep you on the platform for as long as possible. So they want to show you what they think you want, like what they believe you based on demographic, Democrat, oh my God, demographic info and stuff from your device and everything like that. That's why I don't give any app access to my camera roll. I have to go through and manually approve every picture in every app every single time. Because if you give them unfettered access to your camera roll, they have your entire camera roll. You have pictures of yourself, even if you don't post them, they've scanned them. You took a picture of a product at the score, store, they scanned it. And now they know what products, they know what store you're at. They have your location information. Tangent Express over here. No, that was why people should get rid of Instagram. So yeah, all these, eventually, all these platforms will communicate in some way, shape, or form. They might not all, that's probably what they'll do. They you won't, still haven't explained what the Dinosaur Express is. Dinosaur? Mm, mm, starts with an M. Mastodon? That one. 
It's just an app that has access to the Fediverse. And it currently exists? Yeah. It's not made up in your head? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Look. Pull it up right now. Mastodon. course it's pulling up the band and the animal and right there free open source social media platform microblogging features similar to twitter okay and you can i can't remember if it's that one or there's another one um you can take it and basically white label it and make your own version that still connects to the same services so it's more like a website using like WordPress or Shopify or Wix or whatever than it is like a dedicated social media app. Okay. It's only going to get more confusing. So you had a few other Twitter accounts or X accounts you wanted to talk about. Yeah. Care to enlighten all of us? Well, myself Greg, included. Greg ratioing everybody is always the best. And uh, so, yeah, I see you got Defiant L's there. Um, if anybody knows who Brooklyn Dad Defiant is, and I, I looked it up and that's what it is, um, diehard leftist out of New York that all he does is post political bullshit against anything conservative, Republican, libertarian, whatever. Okay. For example, um, he took... A uh, screen grab of them praying at the Republican National Convention. Mm -hmm. And so Trump had his head down, his eyes closed. And that was the, see, he's too old. He's falling asleep at his own convention. Gotcha. And then there's the people that take the, uh, before the venue's fully packed. Mm, yeah. Nobody showed Can't, up. Yep. Can't even yep. hold it together. Yeah. Yep. And that's all these people do. Gotcha. Clickbait. That's not just clickbait. They're taking every opportunity. If you are not perfection all the mm -hmm. time, you misspeak. You have a typo. I've always had a theory about people like that. They're doing it because they're making money from it. Oh. Yeah. No, that's not the theory. Those are the guys who are behind closed doors, either getting walked like dogs or peeing on women. There's like, they're he's, behind, probably, behind, he's probably being shit on behind closed doors. They are terrible human beings. Mm -hmm. So defy else. Okay. Uh, takes posts, both political and non-political. Mm -hmm. And so people, they're like, they have a hot take. They'll go back and search like, um, I don't know. I just gave you some examples earlier. Mm hmm. Like I'm endorsing so-and-so and nobody else can ever do it. And then like three hours prior, I would never endorse anybody else ever. Right. The flip-flopping. Yeah. And it's over the span of hours sometimes. Days, over, weeks, yeah. even a year. Yeah. They'll go and dig up posts from these people that right. they, as soon as the, the, their. And I'm sure the excuse is always, oh, well, that was a different staff member who wrote it or no, whatever. No, no. They don't. They, they don't even defend themselves? Nope. Oh, okay. Just kidding. They stick hard line to their new thing is the only thing that they've ever said. Oh, okay. We never said that? Got yep. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're imagining things? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I mean. You're delusional. Some, like some of them, not all of them, but some Gaslighting. of them. Gaslighting. Some of them will go back and delete their own content after the fact because okay. of it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that we've talked about today, I just don't miss social media at all. Wow. I, I was almost going to agree to come back to Facebook, but I just, I don't miss it at all. I don't miss seeing any of this bullshit. I really don't. It's only going to get worse. I'm sure it is. People like you on the internet, for sure it's going to get worse. Well, I just like to make fun of everybody. <laughs> hey, for the longest time. That was the first thing I did when we got together. For the longest time. I unfollowed you. For the longest time, I tried to make 
useful content for people Mm -hmm. and nobody like people would literally they would make fun oh i don't care about that Mm -hmm. i don't care about my privacy and then it happens their shit gets stolen i'm like see they're like whatever you're just being an asshole just because you're right uh no it's because i feel like you're talking about jesse no i'm talking about everybody there's there are a handful of people, and there are people that are starting to come around to it, finally. Really? Like who? Just in general. Like, people are now starting to engage. Because now I just, I laugh at people. Like, oh, my account was stolen. I'm like, and they'll explain, like, what happened. I'm like, no, it's your own fault. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it, at this point, to me, it's it's common sense. People have warned you for long enough. Mm-hmm. If you're not using two-factor authentication for stuff, at a bare minimum, you're dumb. A bare minimum, you're dumb. Yeah. That's your next shirt. At yeah. a bare minimum, you're dumb. Yeah. There you go. I just saw somebody posted a picture of this guy and said, please, no photos. And it was like, legend says he's the most photographed man in town. This <laughs> <laughs> is a random person walking their little dog. Okay. So, all right. So. That's it. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>